Hello, everyone, and cat lovers everywhere. I'm Jackie Ott Jacola, Executive Director of Every Cat Health Foundation, and this is Musings with Every Cat. <laughs> it's on this show that we discuss our appreciation of all cats your cats, my cats, pedigree cats, cats who live in the community, or cats who live in shelters. It's all about all cats, every cat, everywhere, every day. So a special thank you and a shout out to Star Financial Solutions and Esther Kuznets for sponsoring these first three episodes. Esther is based in Sarasota, Florida, and Star Financial Solutions is registered with the Investment Center, Inc. They're a member of FINRA and SIPIC. That means something in the financial world. And we are so happy that Esther is a cat lover and supports us with her support of musings. So not only are we here to share information and to, to love on kitties, but we're here to learn and grow our knowledge together. And it's all in an effort to support Every Cat Health Foundation's mission to fund and promote cat health research. In fact, over our 50 year history, we've granted over eight and a half million dollars in cat health. We're the only foundation like ours in the world whose singular focus is just that, cat health research. And we rely on donors and supporters and sponsors to fund this research through grants. These grants are reviewed by an expert scientific review committee, statisticians, and ultimately approved by our board of directors who I have the privilege of working with. So from nutrition to heart health, dental hygiene, behavior, genetics, diabetes, FIP, early spay neuter, dare I say anything that goes into keeping your cat healthy and happy, Every Cat Health Foundation has had a hand in developing those treatments, those cures, those guidelines. So we also offer education relating to that groundbreaking work. So I hope that many of you had a chance to participate in our recent symposium that we put on with the University of Florida College of Veterinary Medicine, in particular Maddie's, Maddie's Shelter Medicine Program, and that was in the beginning of July. We had over 500 people attend both in person and virtually from 20 different countries. So that was just a, an amazing turnout. And these times are very exciting for, for cats indeed. Mm -hmm. So if you missed our symposium, you need to go to our website, everycat.org, sign up for our e-newsletter so you don't miss the next one. Okay, today I am super excited to introduce Marlo Muse from Lions and Owls Cattery and her absolutely adorable Persian kittens and Cheyenne Williams who has uh, another kitten over there. I, I'm, I'm learning their names. But Lions and Owls Cattery is um, breeding award-winning Persians, and it's for the connoisseur of finely bred felines, I understand. Mm -hmm. And you also have um, some other LLCs as well. I do, I do. We formed a production company for feline content, and we have formed a club where we're planning on putting on a benefit show. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And Cheyenne, what is your um, role with cats? You're, you're a veterinary technician? Yeah, I'm a veterinary technician and um, I own Shiny Day Pet Care in Sarasota, Florida. And while Marlo is going and doing all that stuff, I help take care of her cats. And these are these are the softest kittens I have ever <laughs> petted, I think. Thank you. So who do we have the pleasure of uh, meeting today? You have lions and owls, Tortugo Dry, also known oh as Toogies. And this one over here is lions and owls, Tahitian Gardenia. She's known as Tahiti. Oh, wow. You, you're very tropical, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> and how old are they? They're both a little bit over two and a half months. Oh, my gosh. And how much do they weigh? Oh, oh, good question. Uh, they're only a few pounds. They're still babies. You are still babies, <laughs> but you've, you've had your first vet visit, I hear? They have. They have. They're vaccinated and they are ready to go for their next booster. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, lots ahead of you. And these are Persians. And can you tell me uh, how you became enamored with the this breed and kind of what their oh. characteristics are? Yes. Yeah, so, well, the Persians, what I love about them, they are as beautiful in their temperament as they are to look at. 
they're just, they're wonderful companions. They are the sweetest things in the world. I do not consider them beginner cats because they are uh, <laughs> very high maintenance on the grooming. Okay. But if you're willing to put in the work on the grooming, they are one of the best cats out there. And how long have you um, shared a home with Persians? Uh, about seven years with the show lines. Wow. Wow. Okay, well, a little bit of a teaser for this, the second half, but can you tell me a little bit about their, their parents um, and their particular colors and the things you look for when you're breeding your cats? Yes, well, this is a very interesting line. Um, we have on the mother's side, they are out of the Castlegate line. Castlegate line is known for green-eyed silvers and goldens. On the father's side, we have the Pejin lines. The Pejin lines are the most awarded cats in the world. They had the most long haired grand champions ever bred. Uh, Pamela Bassett and her uh, mother, they produced three cats of the year. Uh, what we were trying to do with this breeding is we are doing a breed preservation project. We are trying to put the green eyes back on the silver tabbies because you just don't see it in the show ring very much anymore. Uh, this is our first generation. Uh, two piece, I think he's going to have hazel eyes. Uh, we might have gotten lucky with Tahiti. She's still very young, but it's a muted green. It's not, you know, an ideal green, but she's our first generation attempting it. Well, we can we can enjoy uh, mm -hmm. her face a little bit. Uh, Tubis has taken a nap, which is wonderful because it, it's very <laughs> very comforting sitting here. Let me tell you. So um, now, equally as important as the kittens, I have to mm -hmm. to thank you for the time you took with me at my first CFA show, Cat Fanciers Association, last holiday season in Sanford, Florida. And it's a you, great show. It, it was so much fun. It really was, and you took time to to come over and to meet me and learn about every cat and also share about your cats and a, a little bit about, about showing and your experiences there. But can you tell me a little bit about your, your background and how I got into this? Yeah, a little bit. Accidental. <laughs> um, I started off in purebred rescue with the CFA. We had a bunch of foster cats. Uh, there was a cat show, so we took them to the cat show. Uh, very successful in placing the cats that day. And then I, we would put the cats in the ring. Uh, we would enter them in household pets. And I, I loved it. I ended up being a foster failure. So I had a little black Persian and he was just, he never really was healthy enough to pet out. Uh, we would find out that he had PKD. Um, I had never dealt with PKD before and it's, it's, it's an awful disease. It really is. Um, going through the treatment in his end of life care, I found out that it's somewhat preventable that there's a DNA test. So after he passed, I both wanted to show and I wanted to make another little cupcake. And so I got into breeding. Um, it took me a year to research the lines, learn them. Um, and uh, I finally, I found a, another black cat and he was my foundation stud and I got into the show circuit and that's how I ended up here. And Marlo, can you share with us, you know, what do cats experience at a cat show? Cat shows are wonderful. Cat shows are where you go to show off your cats. It's where you go to meet other breeders. Uh, you have eyes on your cats. You have judges. You put your cat in the ring. The judge will pull the cat out of the cage, put it on the judging stand, evaluate it. And then if you're lucky enough, you get called, it, called back up to final. And you accumulate points. It's actually a point system. And after you get so many points, you reach different levels like granding. Uh, if you make enough points and you're the top 25, then you can get things like regional wins, national wins. And each association has a different point system, but it's it generally follows a, uh, something like that. Well, I imagine these kitties are going to be great because they're so chill and relaxed and they seem to really enjoy the attention and just whoop, move into it. So, <laughs> so thank you for that explanation. I know we appreciate it because if you're not familiar with, with cat shows and what they are, um, they're, they're a great place for people or the public to come visit and learn about cats. It's, they're a lot of fun. I, and again, I, I thank you for, for sharing the <laughs> kittens with us. And we will talk a little bit 
more about them um, with a, a special guest upcoming. Is there anything uh, else you would like to add about your kittens or how you spend your time? Or Cheyenne, can you let us know mm -hmm. um, anything special about these particular kittens or the Persian breed that really draws you to them? I mean, they, they are really the best temperament cats um, that I've worked with. So especially these two, they are so lovable. Like <laughs> they, they were a little guarded with me at first because I'm not mom, um, <laughs> but they warmed up right away and they just really, they let you handle them and groom them. Oh, sure. um, she's trying to get away. So I had to put her back in there. <laughs> um, but they, they really are a special breed. And I'm well, happy I get to spend time with them. I can tell you they are they are very curious, but also very calm kittens. So <laughs> we, this is amazing. We're very excited about this litter, especially that one. To get the eyes and the ear set like that, it, it's hard to do. So we're we're thrilled with this litter. Really thrilled with this litter. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. We're going to take a short break right now for a word from our sponsor and then come back with a very special guest from the University of Missouri. Star Financial Solutions wants to help you grow your assets and work with you to plan your financial future. We offer a variety of services from portfolio management, financial planning, retirement planning, and more. We pride ourselves in knowing how much we mean to our clients and the trust they have placed in us. Look for me on Financial Fridays on the Suncoast View and give us a call to learn more about how we can help you. Star Financial Solutions, planning and investing for all that life brings. Welcome back and welcome back to Marlo Muse, Cheyenne Williams, to, uh, Tortugo. Tortugo and <laughs> to, to Tahiti. Tahiti. Okay, I'm, I'm getting there again, very tropical, tropical. Um, and let's give a long distance hello to Dr. Leslie Lyons. Thank hello. you so much for joining us this evening. Dr. Lyons comes to us from the University of Missouri and is a, and, and I should say Missouri, I have to learn these things, and is a genius in the area of genetics. She is a Gilbreth McLaurin Endowed Professor of Comparative Medicine at the College of Veterinary Medicine, University of Missouri, Missouri, uh, and a Professor Emerita, University of California, Davis. Her efforts in studying cat DNA for the betterment of cat health has been funded many times by Every Cat Health Foundation, formerly known as Win Feline Foundation, but that's still us. And this groundbreaking work is used to develop uh, drug and gene therapies linked to diseases in cats. And much of this work, I understand, is modeled after studies in human medicine. So Dr. Lyons, your background is extremely impressive. And I'm hoping you can give cat lovers everywhere just a sense of how your work relates to their cat's health in, in kind of a, a lay summary form. <laughs> well, yeah, howdy from uh, University of Missouri. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to attend your presentation. Yeah, every cat is certainly uh, a valuable input into the healthcare of both cats and humans. As a mammal, cats and humans have very many, a high percentage of their genes are exactly the same. So the health problems that we see in cats, we've already mentioned polycystic kidney disease, that's actually one of the most common inherited problems in humans as well. So many humans wow. have problems with PKD and we're still trying to um, develop treatments that will be both useful to cats and to humans. So it just so happened that PKD occurred in Persian cats, but cats all over the world have diabetes and obesity and, and asthma. And these are very common problems that are found in humans that are found in our cats. And how long have you been working in this field and how long specifically have you had an interest in cats? Well, I've always had a cat. My last name is Lyons, but I never, <laughs> ever planned to study cats. Um, so it wasn't until February of 1992 that I graduated and left the University of Pittsburgh and went to work at the National Cancer Institute. And we used to call the NCI the National Cat Institute, but <laughs> um, that's where I started 
my cat research as a postdoc. And one of my first projects that was funded, ever funded, was from the Wind Feline Foundation, and it was on genetic diversity of Havana Browns. And then we also started working on the cranial facial uh, presentations in the Burmese cats. Oh, my gosh. And he has something to say about all of that. He's very <laughs> appreciative of your work, as are we. Um, I- Oh, goodness. Now, I guess um, when I was uh, first meeting Marlo and we were talking about her passions and her kittens, she actually brought up DNA and DNA testing uh, to me and brought up your name. So immediately I'm like, oh, gosh, this is this is a conversation to have for sure. But Marlo, can you can you let us know a little more what your particular interest is with these guys and the work that Dr. Lyons does? Well, these two have a very interesting pedigree behind them, Dr. Lyons. They have on the mother's side, uh, silver, golden, and back way behind CPC, because sometimes silver and golden breeders use CPC to uh, deepen the eye color, the green eye color. On the father's side, you have the father is a silver tabby, and the grandsire is a smoke. So uh, when these two kittens were born, we thought they were silver tabbies. Now as they're aging, we're not ready to call it. I think particularly the girl is going to end up being a shaded silver. Uh, so we're still a little bit out with that. Um, you're, I believe you're doing a DNA test right now with silvers and goldens on the tarnish. So I thought their DNA might be of use to you. Um, I think you said too, there's an HCM study going on. HCM does occur in Persians. So I'd like to contribute samples to that too. Yes, certainly you've, you've picked some very interesting colors mm-hmm. to, to work with. When you mention CPC, I, I think you're talking about the mutations that cause a cat to be pointed. Yes. Like a point. Siamese or a Himalayan. Yes. Uh, so uh, those are ten- temperature sensitive mutations and they do create a deepness to the eye color. And then, um, yeah, then of course, we've worked with Persians for polycystic kidney disease. We've known about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as well, HCM. And we're always interested in helping any breed. Really, now we have the techniques from working with our breeds. Now we can work on every cat. We can work on just random bred domestic cats that are 95% of the cats in the household uh, throughout the world. So now we can do precision medicine for cats, which all came from working with the breeds. Oh, wow. And Dr. Lyons, you're as, as the the breeders and and veterinarians and, you know, the whole host of cat lovers and cat giver caregivers are relying on you for your information you're relying on them for Mm -hmm. samples right (laughs) absolutely it's a big give and take we can't do anything without your participation and of course the things that you're more enthusiastic about those those rise to the top those get the most attention because we really can't do our work without interactions with the breeders and the owners well, in fact, uh, these kitties at 10, 10 weeks old, how, how old did you tell me they, they were, Marla? A little bit over two and a half months. A little over two and a half <laughs> months. They've had barely a, a vet visit, but Marlo um, and Cheyenne can demonstrate just how non-invasive some of the, the sampling can be with these kitties on their, their first trial. So I'm gonna pass, I'm, oh, I, I, hang on. Yeah, I'm gonna pass you back, I think, if I can, and Cheyenne can, yeah, go there, go to your friend. And we'll just kind of, maybe Dr. Lyons, you can walk us through uh, a cheek swab and let us know what, yes, what that does. Cheek swabs are a very easy way to get DNA from a cat. And the cheek swab means nothing more than taking a Q-tip. Uh, you can get something fancier like a cytological brush, but Q-tips work just as well. And we're going to rub the cotton part, the cotton bud, between the cheek and the gums of the cat. And we're just going to spin that or rub it around a little bit. And that's how we get cells so that we can isolate the DNA off of that cheek swab and do specific genetic tests. So this is good when we have a known test 
and we want to type that cat to see if they have a specific DNA variant that could be a disease or it could be a coat color mutation. So it could be fun things too. So these guys are poised and ready for mm -hmm. their, their first cheek swab. So let's, let's see, see how this goes. All right. Do you need any help? Are you good over there? We're, we're yes. going to attempt it. I think it should go easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's doing it pretty easy. Oh, my goodness. One, it's no big two, deal. Three, four. Oh, you Marla, would like to have a yeah. Four swishes. Okay. <laughs> so now what you need to remember is that's been in a cat's mouth. There's bacteria in there, too. So you have to let that dry. Okay. Wrap it in some paper or attach it to paper. Don't ever put it in plastic. No, so no Ziploc bags. Envelope, okay. Put it in a regular envelope and send it off to the DNA testing lab that you're working with. And uh, we were going to send this to your institute. Uh, you want registration, pedigrees, and pictures of the coat as well? That's right. So when we're working with coat colors, then yeah, it's, it's very helpful to have the pictures of the cats as well. Uh, we should be talking a little bit more about eye color because that's never been approached before ah. uh, to really try to control what are the genes controlling eye color. Uh, we know some associations, but not all of them. That and, would be huge. Uh, and then yeah, we keep pedigrees <laughs> so we know how the cats are related because we don't want all related cats in a project. We pick and choose from different breeders. Well, and I guess um, th that leads me to, to a question because you have the projects you're working on specifically listed on, on your website, and I believe we have that uh, info in the credits. And so you, you always have up there if you're looking for samples or if, if you're needing samples or when, when should people send you the samples? When are people maybe just taking DNA uh, samples kind of for fun? Um, you know, what, what are the different parameters that, that people should think about? Um, when, when they're talking DNA about their cats. I, I, I say this a little lightly because my, my dad wanted an ancestry kit for you know holidays one day, just for fun. We, we weren't diving into any studies or anything. So I, I guess just on the cat side, can you just talk about the, the different types of tests and, and what are appropriate when? Yeah, well, you can always keep DNA on your cats because you, you never know when you might have to go back in time. Perhaps a new mutation arrives and you want to know whether your older foundation cats had a mutation. So you can do these buckle swabs and just keep them in your own storage in a drawer. Okay. And so I advise everyone to just keep a DNA bank of all their own cats. You have to make sure it's all labeled and, and correct so that you can go back years from now and go after it. But um, on our website, periodically, we update what is going on with different projects and also through every cat, they help us with announcements to what new projects are being funded. And then we never turn down a sample because we never know when that might be appropriate for some other project that we're doing. Sometimes we're just looking at genetic diversity of cats and different breeds. Um, and then sometimes we need to go back, hey, now we have a mutation for HCM and Persians. Let's go back to all our historical samples and see what information we can find. So breeders are always sending in samples. Every week we get samples of various different kinds into the laboratory. Dr. Lyons, why is more and more research like this important? Well, what we find from the research is we hope to develop genetic tests that allow breeders to produce very healthy cats. And, and that's what happened over the years. PKD has drastically reduced in mm -hmm. frequency since the development of the test in 2004. And we're hoping that we'll now also have dietary treatments for the few cats that still have PKD. Uh, but we see that we're reducing hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and with the coat color mutations, that allows breeders to be more efficient so that they can put more money toward health care of their cats and by producing more cats that are the ones they want and not cats of colors and types that they don't want. So it helps breeders to not overpopulate um, from their breeding programs. 
and making sure there are pictures of health like these two are, who are enjoying their first outing on TV. <laughs> <laughs> They're being good for us, too. They are being <laughs> so good. Is there anything else um, that any of you would like to add before we wrap up today? Thank you for the research, because there is the issue with the rising cost of vet care. And so this is a very good tool to have in our arsenal for both ourselves as breeders, but also pet buyers. It's a way to deal with the changing economy and the inflation. Yes, yeah, so there's many different places that do genetic testing. We always encourage working with those that are invested in doing research, such as many of the ones that are involved with veterinary schools. Uh, but most, most facilities that do testing do contribute some way back into research as well. Um, so we always look for those groups and for groups that provide good customer service. Remember, you always pay uh, for what you know you get, right? This has been great. And I really want to thank you all for your knowledge and sharing your kittens and, and, and beaming in from the university as well, because really it does it does take a village and we are all here for the cats and the people who love and care for them. So thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank all of you for watching all in the name of bettering cats lives and celebrating their special relationships that we have with them. Um, related to kind of all of this, I'd like to give you a brief teaser to all you cool cats and frisky kittens who are thinking about going to CatCon October 1st and 2nd in Pasadena, California. Keep an eye out for every cat. We are actually going to be there and help you learn about cat health and lifespan with some colleagues. We have some special activities, lectures, some guests and and more. I, you know, check out the CatCon website. I've never been myself, but I hear outfits are a thing. So I have to start worrying about what I'm going to wear to CatCon. So I hear we should have a very catastic time there. So October 1st and 2nd. If you'd like to learn more about how to become involved with every cat, supporting cat health research, events, education programs, please visit our website, everycat.org. While you're there, sign up for our e-newsletter. I urge each of you to continue to follow us on social media for the latest on where our funded research is making the biggest impacts and to see where we'll be next. Please share your stories with us and help share ours. And that helps cats everywhere. It helps build an even more impactful community of cats, cat lovers saving lives. Again, I'm Jackie Ottacola. I will see you out and about this fall, where please, I hope you join us to learn and celebrate cats through musings with every cat.